Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. Today, we're not at Berrimer, as you can probably tell by the sign behind me, we're at Parky in Derby. <laughs> come and check out this dealership for absolutely ages. It's run by a guy called Jamie Capel and he's a bit of a motoring industry legend to be honest. He's quite well known, very active, doing lots of things for Ben. Um, he's on a lot of the kind of car dealer groups you find on Facebook and things like that. Uh, and he's a real character. So I'm kind of like honored to come down here, check this place out. We're gonna have a walk around, look at some of the stock, um, see what kind of interesting stuff you've got because Jamie's got like a really kind of interesting taste, I think, of cars, it's similar to mine. He doesn't mind the sort of leggier, lumpy, expensive cars, things like that. He's not somewhere that wants to stick to low mileage, um, low owner type thing like that, I don't think. But we're gonna find out. We're gonna have a walk around, see what they've got. It's in a really nice location here in Derby, right next to the marina. They've got workshops here. They've got cars absolutely everywhere. I think it's about 300 cars in total. So we'll have a walk around, we'll check the place out. But most importantly, I wanna get in there and speak to Jamie and uh, you know find out what's been the key to his success because He's, he's rushing away in there, he's really busy, he's one of those characters, you absolutely love it. He's a bit like me, he seems like he's borderline obsessive with work. Um, so it's quite interesting to find out that probably similar characters in that way, but I think he's doing it a lot better than me, so I want to find out his secrets. So first off, should we talk about the location? It's really nice, just behind us over here is the marina, the Stenson Marina, I believe it. They've got a hotel, pub right next door, there's offices everywhere, they got cars kind of all the way around the front, they've got a yard in there as well as the workshops. We wander around the front and we'll look at some of the cars. Very nice Ferrari California there. I don't think that's necessarily anything to do with them, but it could be. Yeah, so I think all the cars around here, these are all to do with car key. That's the marina over there. We're going to check that out in a minute. Jamie said they have got some officers over here, so I guess they've got some kind of admin staff in there. And that's one of the things I really want to talk to him about because he runs this site. There's 300 cars. There's not 300 here. He's got a compound somewhere else with another like 100 cars stored. Um, they got a workshop and there's like 40 odd or so there he told me this morning and he runs it on like a skeleton staff probably no more than i've got and i want to know how that's possible you know how are they doing all this especially when it's the type of cars that they are selling it's not just those low mileage kind of like later model cars so try and find out what the uh what the secret is so let's head around we'll have a quick wander in the uh, showroom and then we'll see what's on the forecourt so it's actually like a really interesting setup. This is obviously an old like boat hangar. Is that what they would call it? A boat kind of warehouse. He said it was in a pretty poor state when they got it, but they kind of tidied it up, put the nice mezzanine office in there. We're going to check that out in a bit. Space for loads of cars in there. It's nice to have that kind of big open space for a showroom. People do come and look at the cars inside. Got some interesting sort of towers, chimneys over in the background that Jamie described as being like something out of the Simpsons. But just on the other side there is the marina. So. Not that often you go to somewhere to buy a car and you've got a scenic view as well. So everything up this side is to do with car key. There's like a row of cars in the middle, they said, which is like people parking for the marina. And they've taken on all of this over here. So they've got the workshops. So we'll go and check that out and see what they're doing. I want to talk to Jamie, find out. I assume they don't do any work for, you know, retail customers doing mechanical stuff, which is obviously the way we've gone now and see, you know, what was... Was that a conscious choice or is it just something they haven't ventured into or, or what's the score? But I'm very interested in walking around because there's really interesting stuff here. There's like an ML63 right there. There's absolutely loads of Range Rover products, which a lot of people would be scared of stocking at the moment, but I don't think Jamie's that type of guy. There's an AMG GT just inside the door that's obviously got a wheel off at the moment, having the wheels refurbed. Um, and I haven't even ventured down this side. So let's have a wander down, check out the marina and see what cars we've got at car key at the moment. Look at this beast of a Volvo S90. That's right up my street, to be honest. Our design, 15,295. That's, um, that's like an S8, not an S8. That's like an A8 sort of uh, seven series style car, isn't it? Very nice. Here's, here's the Marina, let's go and check that out. I feel like probably every car dealer needs someone they could come and sit here. I'm surprised Jamie hasn't got a little bench out here where I can just sit and look at the water and relax in between calls from screamers and all the problems that every car dealer gets. It uh, is nice to have that. I suppose we've got the beach right next door, so no, it's not to be sneezed at. 
so evoke a class another evoke what's that a cla yeah cla i was going to buy one of those yesterday at g3 but it ended up being a bit smoky for my liking i always find it interesting when i come to sites like this and they've got the cars parked all on a row and clearly you'd have to move a few cars to get them out we could do that at Bear motors and we could probably get another 10 cars on site but then it's just a logistics issue when it comes to moving around but you know it could be missing out an extra 10 cars could make you a you know, a lot more money within a month. Is that worth doing? That's nice. That's a Passat CC, I imagine. They've got these really nice seats inside. Am I right in saying that's a... No, it's not. It's an Arteon. That's a bit of a rare beast, isn't it? It'd be interesting to see how much uh, warranty stuff they have to do because, you know, he obviously likes the cars that are really nice. They're really interesting. They're going to draw people here to come and want to buy them. And they've probably got really good margins in them, but I bet you they're a bit more problematic. But I guess if you're geared up for that and you're used to it and you've got a team that's ready to work and do it, then, you know, you're set up for that. Ooh. This is a nice looking car. What is it, a 630? Yeah, 630i Grand Tora. That is right up my street, although it does look a bit kind of... I don't know. It's got a bit of a beluga whale's head look about it. It's quite bulbous, but... I bet you that would be supremely comfortable to drive. Yeah, so obviously they've got their big showroom, which is actually really nice to have. I've seen it completely full up in here before because Jamie's quite active on social media, so you'll, you've seen the garage quite a lot if you follow Car Key on Instagram, which I believe is just at Car Key. It's nice to be able to have this. It's a really big open space, so if you do want to pull a car in here, a customer can open it out. They could open up the bonnet, doors, everything, and actually have a look around, which you probably can't underestimate that as a kind of selling point, really. Should we have a little walk under the mezzanine and see what's tucked away under there? There's not many places you get like a 208 GTI, a Disco 4, next to an Infiniti, next to a Mercedes convertible and a AMG GT in one place. It is like someone's given a big kid some money to buy stock. He's probably not following many of the rules that most people would tell you to follow, but it obviously works. This is nice. Full fat Range Rover. This is the sort of thing I really fancy for myself. What have we got? 68 plate, it is sold, so we won't hop in there, but that's the sort of thing most people are absolutely terrified of selling. And a really nice McCann over here. Is that a McCann or is that a KN? Shows how much I really know about cars. No, it's a KN. I don't know anything, do I? Sort of thing I fancy one day, but I've got to get Jamie to teach me how to actually, you know, make good money from car sales first. So uh, let's see if we can catch a minute of his time and steal all of his uh, tips and tricks. Do you sell like, like aspirational stuff? So it's yeah, but affordable, yeah, affordable yeah. aspirational stuff. So, you know, our sweet spot, I'm sure if you look at our website today, I'd probably say kind of 10995-ish is around about what we... What we sell, I mean, let's have a quick look. I can just do it now. I mean, we've got 242 cars listed today That's that are available. In addition to that, there's, six, I just counted up 62 sold cars to get out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just obscene. And then 11195. More. Because, okay, so for me, we don't have a, an infinite pot of money. The money is out, so we're not funded. I can put as much margin across a 10 gram retail car as I can a 20 gram retail car. It's maybe a little bit more, but you certainly don't get double. Mm. So my philosophy is, is, well, I'd rather have two 10 grand cars versus one 20 grand car. Yeah, I, I, I just, I don't know, I just understand it, I suppose, that, that market just by virtue of the fact that that's what oh, we yeah, do. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, it's the same stuff I've always wanted to buy. And I, mm. I'm always trying to push you away. You need the low mileage stuff and whatever, but it sits around longer and you can't do as many deals, can yeah, you? Yeah, I, I mean, low mileage stuff, we occasionally buy it, but I mean, there's one there. I bought that with 36,000 miles on it. It's a 61 plate murky class coupe for 9895. I'd rather it had a hundred on it, and it was six nine nine five. Because I genuinely think I would probably have sold it by now. That, that car's been advertised twenty seven days. Don't think I've had a sniff on it yet. Maybe my workshop would prefer it if I <laughs> if I bought. Well, that's the issue. Is you, do you get an awful lot of? I know you must do because I've only got fifty cars in stock, and it's non stop warranty stuff. It's just part of the job, isn't it? Absolutely. Every day, every day we're getting calls. Yeah. You know, can we prep? I'm going to say better. 
I think that's the wrong word. Can we be... Well, maybe it is. Maybe it's a collective effort from the team. Some of the stuff is daft that comes back. Some of the stuff is completely uncontrollable. Yeah. Some of the times there's things that we miss, which is annoying, yeah. daft things. But there's all, sometimes a bit of a deferment of responsibility. Whose responsibility is it? Is it the sales team? Is it the workshop? Oh, last it, week I had one where a customer came back and he's like, oh, I want to leave my dog in the car, but I can't because one, just one of the rear doors won't lock. Everything else works perfectly and you know it's just those silly little things yeah. you miss. If a customer's bought a car on finance or through your Zutos, your 247s, the brokers who we use, obviously if a customer's car faults within the first 30 days, you know, pretty much the law means that they could just return it and mm. there's no no real resist. Well, you can resist, but yeah, yeah, there's not much. So we find when something does go wrong on a car under 30 days, you're suddenly trying to, right, we need to keep them happy. You're delivering, I mean, it's not as crazy as, but you know, you're like, right, just go and take them a Bentley, just keep them happy because we don't yeah, want no, to buy yeah, that yeah. car back. But we just process the stuff straight away, you know. So, yeah, sometimes we're delivering a loan car three hours away a week after a customer's taken the car because we don't want to bring it back and we don't want to buy it back. If I unwind a deal, sometimes I'll just buy it back in at what we sold it for and then suddenly you've got a piece of stock that owes you 11 and a half grand that trades at seven. But stuff does go wrong. As again, combination of what we sell. And we need to get in a situation as a business where our cars are prepared and ready to go on the forecourt it's it's utopia it's mm. something that will massively i believe transform the business and it's not that we're in a bad shape we're not we sell cars we're profitable we could be significantly more profitable we could turn our cars significantly quicker and we could have a much easier happier existence be it here at the workshop everybody at the minute a car gets bought I get home on a Tuesday afternoon and I list everything I've bought before those cars have even been paid for, before they've even been anywhere near the workshop. They arrive, they then get cleaned, they get photographed, and then they get just parked anywhere. And then when we take an order on it, that's the point the car goes to the workshop. So take a deposit on a Monday, customer wants to come on a Saturday. It's Tuesday, Wednesday afternoon, the car goes into the workshop. The car then needs a sensor, or it needs a part, or it needs a wing mirror. I've got to say three grand start in the car, pre-vat, pre-prep, obviously. And then I can find a wing mirror on eBay for 250 quid, or I can get one from a main dealer for a thousand quid. The one on eBay is a week and a half away. Customer doesn't want to wait. What do I do? Yeah. Pay a grand, go and buy one from a dealer. And all too often we're buying expensive parts, bit of headlights, wing mirror, just anything. You know, if we've got time on our hands and we haven't got that pressure so much, we can prepare the vehicles more cost effectively and I believe better. Yeah. You know, I buy all those cars on a on a Tuesday, I will pay from within a week. So you'd think on that week I bought 37 cars and I've got an average retail price of kind of 11 grand, 12 grand. So you can imagine what the average value of those cars is and think how much money I've spent. Yeah. I'm spending money that's not in the bank. It's 509 grand due in. So that's off those all those 62 cars, and that's including part X, and so, so it's 509 plus part exchanges. I can go and buy with confidence, because I know, I mean, even if disaster struck, all right, it's still gonna be a couple hundred grand coming in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, even if so, half of them canceled, yeah. because it took so long. Yeah, but they you won't. Know there's a street, no, yeah. they won't. No, but, so that's how I, I, I buy. I don't wait till the money's in the bank, but this is the thing, you, you're constantly spinning here, um, for money you know what's well, really refreshing to hear is you saying everything that i do you obviously do it on a different scale to what yeah, i do but yeah. yeah like you say you know i've got the credit card but it's 35 grand well you got caps on tap yeah yeah, yeah. well obviously you got about 250 what 300 at some time so, so how many staff have you got so i've got um i think it was 21 or 22 when i last counted and oh, no okay. no we fucking took loads more on so right yeah. so i've got two drivers two full-time valeters one full-time painter. I've got Dunk, Jack, Howie, Cav, and Johan. Sales. That's far. So that's ten. There's me, Craig, Joe, and Meg. So that's fourteen. Meg after sales. Joe workshop. Craig general manager. Me. That's fourteen. There's my mum and dad, who in essence are employees of the business. Sixteen. I've got James, Boz, Ben, Rob, so that's 20. Then I've got 
three more mechanics, two more mechanics. The third one starts end of the month. That'll be 23, Nicole, admin 24. And then subbies and part-time yeah, yeah. Is that stuff. 24 full-time? Yeah. 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 I guess it was probably during one of the lockdowns. You had about nine or ten. Oh, God, with 250 cars away, that's about as many staff as I've got. Yeah. Which are, mine, it may be a bit like you said before, probably a bit bloated at the minute for yeah. what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's tricky, isn't it? Trying to run it on there, trying to get the most out of everyone. We only it's just so much now. harder to manage, isn't it? The more people you get, it should yes. make life easier, but in some no. ways it makes it more complicated. No, you double the amount of staff, you quadruple the amount of fucking time and energy needed to manage them. You've got a workshop somewhere else? So off-site, so we used to use the workshop here. Yeah. Now that workshop used to be storage for the marinas, okay. the people, marina people. That was our workshop. And then, as I say, yeah, the workshop's now just down the road at a farm. And then there's a second workshop there next to each other. So two two units, a little bit smaller than this, mm. next to each other. I take it you don't, with your workshops and paint shops, you don't do anything for anyone else? You don't do like... No. Yeah. And if we get to the point where we have every car that's on site is fully prepared, yeah. and every warranty issue can come in on the day and get looked at straight away and fixed, and then we're suddenly stood around, I don't think that'll ever happen, but it'd be nice if it did. At that point, then I would start looking. Yeah, yeah. I've got again certainly some of the more recent acquisitions have got technical knowledge that people are prepared to pay for you know you have to keep tweaking things i think if you carry on doing the same thing all the time you'll never you know if you, if you stay the same then you'll end yeah, up you getting left behind yeah you are exactly. you've got yeah. to just change and evolve and you know customers are customers expectations are higher than they've ever been if i hear again from a customer i've spent it's a 10 grand car. Someone thinks £10,000 is that seal of approval that that car's never going to go wrong. Or, yeah. yeah. Then they yeah. don't understand that, you know, really, 10 grand now is probably a six, six and a half pre pandemic grand car, maybe yeah. seven grand car. I know prices have settled a bit again, but, you know, a 500, 500 yeah. pound car doesn't really exist anymore. You know, if you no. get people like, oh, have you got a 500 quid car for me, lad? You just passed his test. You're like, you're fucking if dreaming. You're giving an auto under 1500 quid. Oh, yeah. They That's don't exist. Again. A 500 car's now 1500 quid. That, that, you know, that is what it is. A 500 pound car really is a piece of shit. But yeah, if you need anything else, man, just shout. Uh, no, really appreciate it. Um, well, good to meet you. And you. I wish every success as yeah, well. Yeah, thank you very much.